Aliens Explored is a podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? 11th of October 1973, Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker were fishing in the small town of Pascagoula when a UFO appears and takes them aboard for an examination. Shortly after they returned and immediately rushed to tell their story in the local sheriff's office. Many believe their story, but others see something more fishy about the tale. Join myself and Neil here on Aliens Explored as we dive into the sometimes murky waters of the Pascagoula abduction. Hello listeners and welcome back to Aliens Explored, your weekly look at the mysterious skies and bottom of the ocean and hollow earth and wherever else mysteries are to be found, especially in secret government archives. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Neil Kelly. And I'm your other host, Stu Jackson. Hi, St- Excellent intro there. Oh, yeah. thank you. So, <laughs> I was kind of just winging it and the words are just rolling out of my mouth and uh, yeah. so, sometimes they make sense. When I do it like that, and we we, yeah. we we were lucky this time. That was that was a good one. No, excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. How are you keeping? Yeah, yeah, very well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Because that's what um, we say in Britain, don't we? Someone says, "How are you?" So, well, you know, could be worse. Worse yeah. things happen at sea. Yeah. Do you know what people can't complain? Uh, we, we have this thing. I don't know if it's the same. Uh, elsewhere in the world, but we have this. You know, we'll say like, "How are you?" And mm. if you actually, because I have this habit of like telling people how I actually. Oh, am. how annoying! Well, I've not how been annoying. feeling very <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, That's people look I at meant, me yeah. weirdly. It's like, but but of course they're too polite, being British, to say anything. Mm. Well, I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I, 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 to be fair, I, I did ask him how he was, <laughs> and it, it's funny when you, it. when you when you go to the doctor and. Uh, you, you walk into the, to the doctor's surgery and he says, and, and how are you? And you say, oh, very well, thank you. And he, <laughs> and he just accepts that. You, know, you should really be saying, well, what are you doing here then? <laughs> yeah. Right, fine, next. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd better just check. Oh, dear. Yeah, right. don't, don't tell me how you are. You tell me your symptoms and I'll tell you how you are. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so, I mean, that's not what we're here for no, today this, this, anyway. This week, we're not here to find out how we are. <laughs> this, this this week we're we're here to talk about the Pascagoula abduction on the Mississippi River in October 1973. Um, as you mentioned last week, uh, the, the year you were born, Stu. The year I was born, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't even one year old when this happened. Goodness me. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Showing my age there. Uh, but yes, you had um, Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker uh, mm. fishing away. It's a nice nice October evening. They're um, fishing off this jetty. Quite a big age difference between the two. I mean, one of them was old enough to be the other's father, wasn't he? Uh, well, Charles was actually uh, Calvin's foreman yeah. where he worked. But even so, when you're mixing with work colleagues, don't you tend to mix with people more your own age? Well, I suppose if they had a, a shared interest in fishing, um, um, who's to say what the what the age difference would be? I mean, I'm I'm going to point out, Neil. There's nearly twenty years between us. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, well, um, it's all right. it's just you know, <laughs> make no, an no, observation. I'd... I, th- I do think, I mean, so to back up what you're saying, mm. um, I think when you're talking about a 19-year-old lad, um, yeah, it's a little bit Going different. fishing with a 42-year-old man, you think, really? They're going off in, uh, in, into the back of beyond together. It's easy to think of something um, perhaps, you know, negative or concerning, but we, I mean... 
I don't know. I've never heard anything in this story about anything inappropriate between them. Um, or, you know, indeed anything appropriate. No, um, I'm, just, I'm just covering you know, all the bases. Or perhaps judging them by my own standards. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I take well, young men off to go fishing or <laughs> You know. <laughs> it's, it's a euphemism. Let's go uh, fishing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and another fishing trip this weekend. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't anything, um, you know. I mean, when people work together, it's like, you know, maybe Calvin had never been fishing. Maybe nobody had ever taught him. Maybe. So um, Charles says, well, OK, I'll take you fishing. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, no, I'm, I'm, just I'm sort of, now that I've thought of it, I'm stuck on it now. I think what is his his mates are he's sort of age think he's going to be sucking up to the boss, uh, up to the or well, sucking up to the foreman anyway. To get spend, you know, when they come to doling out the shifts, he'll get a better deal than other people because he's friends with the foreman. Or... Uh, just in case it's a particularly British expression, sucking up to someone uh, means kowtowing to them. You know, being particularly friendly. In hopes of um, reward or favour, yes. reward or favour, yeah, uh, brown nosing. It, it's um, sociopathic activity, isn't it? It's um, is it? It 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 is. It's um, it's there's a shallowness to sociopaths, isn't there? That they 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 all their all their relationships have some sort of utility for them. So they they will make friends with people who are useful to them, and. Um, tread all over them the minute they, they decide they're not useful. Okay, I would say yes, it's sociopathic if someone is only capable of that, mm. but just doing it in and of itself, it might just be a strategic move. Yeah. You know, from someone who is perfectly capable of other Let, let's just deeper go with relationships. They, they had a common interest in fishing. <laughs> um they perhaps lived near each other and um they thought they would they would <laughs> Uh, perhaps we're, we're delving a bit too deeply into why these two men I of different we ages, um, um, well, one of them, the other's you know, old enough to be the other one's dad, went off fishing together <laughs> off off a pier off the west bank of the Pascagoula River in Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. A, a disused pier. I don't know if that's relevant, but yes. So um, Pascagoula, it's just it's it's pretty much on the Gulf of Mexico, isn't it? Um, in Jackson County. It, it is in Jackson County, I, that much I know. Um, yeah, and they're fishing till just after dark. <laughs> now that's, mm. That to me sounds wrong. But I I, I think fishing is just an, you know, it, it's just an excuse to have some beers with a mate. That That's how I'm seeing it. It, it is, but isn't, isn't there an optimum time of day to fish? I mean, don't certain fish feed at... There's certain oh, could pred- be. Predators, so okay. It, if, yeah, the... Yeah, I, I know from watching Jaws that the time to go in the sea is not um, at dawn or dusk. You know, that, that's when a predator is hunting. OK. I mean, fair enough. I'm, I, I'm not a fisherman. Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, in fact, I, I find fishing to be a brutal, horrible, um, psychopathic sport. Um, hmm. And anyone who disagrees, and, and you know, it's fine to disagree, just, just pop round and I'll stick a, a hook up the roof of your mouth and... And um, you can see how you feel then. Um, no, I'm, not, I'm. I don't approve of fishing. I think mm. that's fair to say. So I therefore know absolutely nothing about the intricacies like that, like times of day and things like that. It wouldn't even occur to me. So yeah, uh, quite possibly. Mm. possibly. I also think it's a good excuse to have a few beers. And, and also, I guess, <laughs> I guess, like like hunting. Um, I mean, we don't really have hunting in Britain because it's a small country and if you fire off a high velocity round, um, there, there isn't enough wilderness space to absorb it. It will it will fly into a, a populated area or it will hit someone or hit a car or whatever. We're, we're too small and too crowded. Um, but it will be it will be like hunting in Central Park in New York. You know, if, if you missed your target, you would you would hit Something sadly mean, and unfortunately yeah. have fox hunting, yeah. which is a different Which is a different thing altogether. But what I mean is that there is a tradition of finding your own food. I mean, I, you know, I, I doubt if there is anyone in the United States who really needs to hunt to, to feed himself or herself. But people do it. Um, people do live in, in these quiet backwaters and it's just a, a tradition. 
they could just mm-hmm. as easily go to the store. You know, where, where instead of buying ammunition for their rifles, for their hunting rifles, they could just be buying food. Um, and I think it's a similar thing with fishing. There's a satisfaction in in catching your own fish and and um, eating it. I suppose I assume that they catch fish to eat. I think if it was if it was trolled up in a net and killed very quickly and humanely, that would be one thing. But the I think the methods with fish anyway. We, we're yeah, we're, 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 we're not what we're about. Um, not what we're about. And but, that's not know, what our enough. listeners want to hear us waffling on about. No. They're, they're, what they're interested no. in is is what happened after dark. Well, yes, we're ten minutes in. We haven't even got to the interesting yeah. bit yet. Um, so they're fishing away, and yes, they heard this whirring, whizzing sort of sound. There's these flashing blue lights as this this oval shaped craft with a dome on top, about thirty to forty feet across, about ten foot high, um, appears and floats in front of them, mm. and then they're paralysed. It seems. Yeah, and then these these creatures came floating out of it. Three of them, three small creatures with slits for mouths and uh, claw-like pincers for hands. Mm. Uh, yeah, and take them aboard. Well, I see that. It's just like a ba- their hand was a basic robot grabber, wasn't it? Like like, like, like your, your your granny uses to pick up things that she's dropped. You know, she's just, that, that's all possibly, simple. Possibly. Uh, possibly. Um... I mean, it's hard to, it, it, you know, we're, yeah, it, it's it's a vague description at best, mm. uh, that one. Um, but either way, they're taken on board. Um, they're examined by what they describe as like a giant eye. And then uh, they find themselves back on the pier again. Mm. At which point they run to the police station. And uh, or sheriff's office, mm. as, as it would be, uh, where they they share their story, and they were believed very animatedly. I, I mean, they weren't believed initially. Um, it, they were interrogated by uh, Captain Glenn Ryder mm. initially, who. I mean, by his own admission, he was trying to break their. He thought they were lying, so he was trying to break their story. Mm. In fact, even uh, when they they left them alone in the room, they left the tape recorder on, um, in 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 the hope that maybe or just to see if the, that that when they thought they were alone, they would they would suddenly start breaking their their story mm-hmm. and and saying things between themselves that they wouldn't want to be saying to a police officer. But no, they didn't. They they kept up their kept up their front. Yeah. The, well. Uh... Captain Glenn Ryder definitely believed them in the end. The the Jackson County Sheriff, mm. who he, he he came round to. I think he, he was quoted as saying something like, "Well, if they were making it up, they should be in Hollywood." Mm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he was uh, he was convinced by their story, and they were found to have uh, wounds as well. Each of them had a uh, like a piercing wound on one of their arms mm. each. Um, but if they've have been scanned for implants, I've not found anything about that. But that's just me wondering. Maybe. Mm. Um, but uh, it became national news very quickly. Yep. Yeah. Um, a UFO, uh, a self-styled UFO investigator from Northwestern University, flew down, said their story checked out. Um, yeah. Some people called them liars. Some people suggested that that Hickson. The the older one um, had had an episode of sleep paralysis with hypnagogic hallucinations, while yes. while Parker, the younger man, was highly suggestible. So well, people are desperate to find rational terrestrial solutions to these things when they happen. Mm. I mean, we, you know, when we talked to a few episodes ago about Travis Walton. I know you were you were quite shocked by the response from the townsfolk. I mean I'm I'm not shocked at all by it because people will people will fight tooth and nail to 
keep hold of their existing world view. They, mm. they don't want it broken. They don't want it shattered. They don't want... It, it, it's inconceivable to them to for anything larger than that to be, you know... Yeah, but I'm, um, I'm just thinking, of, I suppose most of the people I know, that if, if someone told them they'd been abducted in an, in an alien spacecraft and they'd lost all track of time and they thought it was hours later when it was days later when they were delivered back... And um, I imagine most people would think, well, I don't know if I believe you, but I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> I, I, I might tell a few people, oh, so-and-so says this happened to him, but, you know, I'm, I don't believe. But these people really cared. These people were really desperate to, for them to, to recant and say, no, it's, it's not true. Something that will turn your entire belief system and your entire world upside down no you you know people will fight Hmm. for that um very very strongly um but back on to to this particular case again you had people sort of very fiercely um arguing the case now um for example they they both initially quite early on they were uh, given polygraph tests Hmm. which they passed um, which they passed, uh, but later on, uh, our old friend Philip Class gets involved and gets wind of this which, and comes which down. Which is a is a is a, um, a red flag for me. It is a bit, and um, his his strongest argument was um, the fact that later on Hickson refused to take a polygraph test. Now, now. I'm going to say to you, I know you've said about um, polygraph tests and and the how they're they're inconclusive mm. at best. I, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but you, you you've certainly expressed that you, you don't take them as read. Yeah, and, Is that and fair? I, I've got um, the the yeah you know, the legal systems of most countries back in, <laughs> agreeing Absolutely. with me on that. Um, that's fair enough so if if you've had an experience you know like that um what you know with, with a ufo abduction or, or something that you can't explain like that and you're trying to convince people that what you're telling is the truth and someone like philip class comes along and says well we'll stick you in a polygraph test then hmm. would you agree to do it knowing that it's going to hinge on a yes or no knowing that your entire believability and your credibility will be hinged on it um, and I, I can see I, why I mean, you might refuse. I, 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 I wonder if they knew who Philip J. Class was. That he really was. Um, I mean, he was described as aviation journalist and UFO skeptic. He was a professional debunker. Yes, he was. The Travis Walton case. He was called in like Batman. To, you know, Shit, we, we've got these people here. Say they're abducted by aliens. They're sticking with their story. Um, send for Philip J. Class because he he'll he'll break them. Um, and it says that you know, there there seems to be a conflicting account. Class found discrepancies in Hickson's story, and noted that Hickson refused to take a polygraph exam conducted by an experienced examiner. Um. But it says in the other article that they they both passed the polygraph test. So so they had initially passed polygraph tests. But so and later on, Philip Class comes along and says, "Right, I'm 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 going to force you to have another polygraph test." So the, the, presumably the the polygraph test that that they'd done before wasn't acceptable. And, and that's that's here's my problem with polygraph tests that um, yeah it, it comes down to who's doing it. And so class comes along and says, yes, I, I, I set great store by polygraph tests, but only if the person that I know and trust is interpreting the results. I'm not prepared to interp- to accept results that have been interpreted by someone who I don't know. There, there's, there's that subjectivity to polygraph tests. There, that, that there is a just, degree of, there is a degree of subjectivity. I think like, Again, going back to the Travis Walton case, where you've got six independent people each passing a polygraph test, uh, that, that's a different, that's that's a statistically um, different thing. But no, but I, I agree. You know, on on their own, on individual cases, yes, they need to be taken cautiously. Um, but what I'm saying is. If if your entire credibility hangs 
on a positive result from a polygraph test, I can see why you would refuse to take one. But Philip Class took that refusal as evidence that he was making it up. Yeah. But here's the thing. This is what I think of polygraph tests. Are you familiar with the term... <laughs> I think we know what you yeah, think of polygraph but, uh, tests. Are, are, you, <laughs> are you familiar with the term scientistic? I've not heard that term. Um, it's not, not scientific. It's scientific no. is where you take something and you dress it up in the trappings of science so that, um, for instance, in, in psychology... Um, you, you would make sure that people wear white coats and carry clipboards and, and do all these sort of experiments and whatever. So you can say, well, you've got an experienced psychologist that I'm, I can interview this person, I can have a conversation and I can make my own judgment. You know, I'm an expert on body language, I'm an expert on whatever, um, that I could, I could testify in a court that I believe that they were either telling the truth or I would believe that they were lying, probably with a greater degree of confidence than the polygraph test. But what they really like, what they like about the polygraph test is that someone can come into court with this great ream of computer printout with all these sort of lines on it that they've marked and say, oh yes, when they asked him this, this was this 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 was his reaction and that shows this, that and the other. It shows what what it shows is whatever I tell you it shows. That that's that's the problem it's, with it. That, so. that's that, okay, so that's not the case with the polygraph test. Um they do get misnomered as lie detectors. That is not what they are. What they are, they they test and they monitor physiological reactions to emotional stimulus. Yes, that, that's that's the basic, and and it is a very scientific process and principle. However, it is not a lie. De- if you think of it in terms of a lie detector, then yeah, it it's going to fall down every it, time because none of the actual scientific people who use them will call it a lie detector. In fact, no. they will go out of their way to say it is not a no, lie detector. No, but they're, they're covering their ass because they know full well... It's, it's, they they it's know not a, full well that as far as a, a, a jury of lay people are concerned, they will believe it's a lie detector. But it's... Well, and, and, that's... and they can say, you know, if, if, the, if the evidence gets questioned, they say, well, no, actually, it's not a, a lie detector. It just measures the physiolog- physiological responses to a, a question. Um, but as far as the jury is concerned, and they know this, they, they don't, don't kid me that they, they've tried to I'm... convince the jury of this. They know that as far as the jury is concerned, this is a lie detector. Well, and no, what this graph be... shows is that this guy lied no, in response no. to that question. They know that. That would be down to the lawyer not the not the polygraph tester and and I think you yeah. know um casting aspersions on that whole area of science which is I think it's a valid area of science I think it's a misunderstood area it's, of science it's, and it's a misused area of science I don't believe they should be used as evidence in a court of law no. I'm very very firm on that because what it measures is stress levels mm. And if a person is particularly stressed by a question, um, I, I'll give you an, an example. I was once asked um, by an ex-girlfriend. Hmm. I did not know at the time she was actually she had a hand on my wrist and she could feel my pulse at the time. Hmm. And she asked me out of the blue if I was having an affair, hmm. and I wasn't. And the question so shocked me, so startled me. Hmm that it affected my heartbeat. Mm. And she took that heartbeat fluctuation that she felt that she noticed as a negative response. And and that's the problem. You know, it, it's it's and that's why I say, you know, it it measures the reaction to emotional stimuli. Which um, which she took to be a lie. Yes she did. Um, so, and and that's where polygraph tests get misused. But it's not a lie detector test, um, but it is a legitimate science, and I will I will defend no. them quite. But, but but I would be willing to bet. I mean, you've mentioned that people have been tried and convicted and sentenced yes. to death and executed yes, on the basis of polygraph evidence. Well, I would yes, bet have. you that the or the, the 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 juries that convicted them and and the, and whoever sentenced them believed it was because the polygraph showed that they had lied. Yes, but that would be because of the way the lawyers presented it, not because of the polygraph yeah. tester themselves. Yeah, but that's what I mean. That it's because it's so commonly accepted that it's a lie detector that yeah. it, it is. 
to all intents and purposes. To, as far, for as far you as need as to blame the media for that, not not the poly, not the science. Blame the, blame the, the media, I'll blame the lawyers, the blame, blame everyone. But as far as anyone's concerned, you know, it's a, it's a lie detector. If if you if you fail a polygraph test, it's because you lied. Uh, Anyway, we've gone yeah. really sideways. Yeah, yeah sorry, I've got to think about polygraph tests. Uh, it's got, I know polygraph you have. Polygraph tests that, are to me what crop circles are to you. That leads into exactly what I'm trying to say, though, is Philip Class hmm. tells Charles Hickson that his whole credibility is going to re- rely on the results of this polygraph test. Now, if you're in Charles Hickson's place, wouldn't you refuse the polygraph test? Um, especially if I knew who Philip Class was. Exactly. And, uh, and so it is. I, I don't know if he did know who he was, but but it is understandable that Charles refused it. That that's what I'm saying. Oh. It's I can understand. It it isn't an indication of guilt. It's not an indication that he's making it up. But that is exactly how Philip Class twisted it. Oh. He said, "Oh, because he's refused, he must be hoaxing it," yeah. and that was his evidence. Mm. Yes, there, there were some discrepancies in his story, but the trouble is when you have a, 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 a traumatic event like that, you don't always remember it absolutely specifically verbatim. But Parker did. Uh, he didn't change his story, but he certainly changed his approach to it. That Whereas Hickson, the, the older guy, um, he was well-known in the community, um, Perhaps you know he 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 seemed to handle the media crush, and he would recount the experience to to anyone who would listen. Um, he mm-hmm. went on television, went on a couple of shows. He published uh, later published a book. But the younger guy Parker, um, he just arrived in Pascagoula from an even smaller town, um, and his plan was to earn some money to, before returning home to get married. Um, mm-hmm. So he then just turned around and told the media that actually. He'd passed out and couldn't remember what had happened. He just didn't want to... I can understand why someone might want to say that. Yeah. He, 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 if, if the media are in your face all the time, um, the easiest thing to do is to say, well, actually, no, I don't I don't really know what happened. Yeah. I mean, I, I have some slight issues with their story myself. Um, mm. When they describe the these these creatures i do get a little bit hung up on the the having claws because in order to kind of as part of our evolution sort of opposable thumbs have been mm. quite an essential element uh when it comes to some sort of making and developing tools um although do you know as i'm saying it i'm thinking actually he might so so the, the traditional grey alien is often depicted as having three fingers and a thumb, but they're very, very long fingers. Hmm. And I suppose seen very quickly in a in a shocked state, it, they might look like claws or pincers or something like that. So I don't know, maybe. Well, maybe not I'm... not if they were not if they were robots of some kind. You know, I mean, we've said who who, who who's suggesting they're robots. No one's suggesting they're robots, but that's what a robot grabber looks like, isn't it? It's just a... They, they've sent a robot out to just get them and bring them in. Okay. I mean, what the, the human presence on Mars is robots, and the, and that the hands are just grabbers, aren't they? They're just... That's, that's true, but already, like... Well, I, I think of... Um, like lost in space, I've, I'm kind of fixated now with that image in my head. Um, you know the robot from that. Actually, no. The, um, the word robotic was. Um, they described the, like robotic-like slits in their mouths. Robot, robot-like slits in their mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Like a the, like three PO, like a Cyberman or something. Just a, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Just a little oval of a mouth. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm picturing almost like a letterbox. Yeah, <laughs> sort of shape, but yeah, or, or like, small, like, like Bender on Futurama. Like. That's, that's yeah, of, and, and yeah, maybe it was that they sent out three Benders to so who, who could sort of fly out and 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 get them. Okay, well, anyway, we've we've hit that point in the show when we summarise what our thoughts. So, 
So what do you think of their story, though? You know, polygraphs to one side. Let's let's not talk about <laughs> that again, <laughs> at least in this episode. Um, but yeah, what, what do you do? You believe them? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. They they yeah they 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 were consistent with their story. Um, they certainly didn't get rich off the back of it. They got they got publicity, but the kind of for, publicity for that only people, a lunatic would want. Well, that is actually a goal of many hoaxers. Hmm. There, there are abduction hoaxers out there, um, hmm. and yeah, the attention, the publicity that that's what they do it for. Hmm. It's, it's, I don't think anybody does it to get rich, or if they do, they're idiots. Um, but yeah. I, I'm yeah, there interested. have been known hoaxes. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the story, but obviously it lacks any corroborating evidence and it, it, I can't accept it as absolutely true. But I also don't have any particular agenda to want to debunk it. I'm perfectly happy to believe that it's true, but um, I don't know that it's true. If you mm. see what I mean. I do, yes, yes. Um, but in your in your heart... Do you think they're telling the truth? Without agenda one way or another. What what's your belief? Um something happened to them. I I, th- I think something did happen, some some kind of traumatic event. Um but I really Yeah, I just have to say, you know, I, I have to accept their story. Um, obviously, that yeah, if that's what you say that happened, that uh, I can't say that it didn't happen. Fair enough. But Fair I also fun. can't say for sure that it did happen. I've just got your word for it, and I've no reason to, I've no reason to disbelieve them. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not too dissimilar from you on that. I, I mean, I do believe they've had an. An extraterrestrial abduction. I'm saying extraterrestrial, otherworldly, because um, we don't know necessarily that they are extraterrestrial. Um, mm. These beings, but yeah, I definitely believe they've had a, an encounter um, with yeah something otherworldly. Mm. Uh, I I I also wonder if their story has. Or if their recollection has become sort of a bit blurred over time, uh, you know, and we we've all done it, you know, where you know we've had some sort of life experience, and then in the pub over a few beers, when you're telling the story over and over again, you know, it gets a little bit bigger and grander and um and what have you. But uh, but no, I, I think there's definitely something to this story. Definitely something. But what do you think, listeners, uh, is Charles Hickson's and Calvin Parker's story? Is it absolutely true? Is there more to it even than we're aware of? Or do you think they just made it up and it's a load of bunkum? Um, Do let us know by the usual means. Facebook and Twitter by searching Aliens Explored. Or you can email us, aliensexplored at gmail.com. Calm. We love to hear what you think about these stories. Um, don't forget to join us next time. Um, so, I mean, you thought we were going back a long way in time with this one was for 1973, Neil. Um, mm. Next week, we're going back to 1561. And uh, we'll be looking at a UFO battle over the skies of Nuremberg. Wow. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Oh, I'll, look forward to, I'll look forward to reading up on that one, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and I'm going to be looking forward to it as well. Uh, hopefully you'll be looking forward to it as well, listeners. Uh, in the meantime, uh, keep watching those floats on the river <laughs> and the skies, because they dip, don't they? Um, when when you get to right. yeah, that's, that's okay. You got yeah. one. Or, or don't go fishing because it's <laughs> But anyway, keep watching the sky as we can. <laughs> Take care for Catch now. You. Catch you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>
Aliens Explored is a Fecal Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Darren Mafucci and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Twitter or Facebook by searching Aliens Explored or visit us on aliensexplored.com.